Greetings everyone, it's Mar. Once again, it's time for another random vlog video. As you can tell from the title, it's an unboxing. Been a long while since I've done one of these and I apologize in advance for the weird setup and the fact that my steering wheel is in the way. Uh, I had an appointment I gotta go to donate some plasma and make a little extra anime expo money. Second one of the week. Anyway, for this, it's an unboxing video because my friend Corey has sent me something. He'd been meaning to send me this for a while and in you know, life and all, but I finally got it in the mail today and I told him I would do an unboxing video once I got it in the mail. So, hey, see, I got it right there. I have a feeling I know what these kind of things are just from the way it's packaged and all that because I have gotten stuff like this before. So let us just see what it is. About to tear the seal for you right here, Corey. So let's see. Okay, there's that one. Okay. All right, now I'm wrapping. Yeah, I'm as giddy as a schoolboy on Christmas. The one that uh, does not peek at their Christmas presents. All right, let's see what we got. Ooh, oh, I think I opened it the wrong way. <laughs> uh, bump. Behold! Oh, letter. All right. Okay, sorry, I got to get the right lighting here. Uh, okay. He didn't say anything about the letter, so I'm going to... To Mario, hope all is well. I've been doing pretty good myself. Hopefully you don't already have these. I also hope you still have or enjoy the old ones I gave you all those years ago. Put your little cut in. Yes, I do, and I still do enjoy them. Uh, even with the couple moves, I still have them near and dear. And uh, the autographs I've acquired since, I do... Well, at least the ones that fit, I do put in there. Like uh, the one I got from Christopher Judge at Level of Expo is going to be in going in with those once I uh, adjust where I have them. Uh, the Derek Mears one still makes me laugh. To Mario, see you at camp. Kind of funny with that since I have cosplayed as Jason since then. Be like, all right, which one are we going to kill? Your response was priceless. I wonder what the camp activities would be. Yeah, I wonder what they would be. All right, we're going to have hatchet throwing at five, and then we got archery at six, and then we got cardio at seven. Because remember, even though we're power walking, we still got to be able to be in good shape to catch those uh, people. Final girls. And... All right. Okay. As for the autographs here, are a few stories relating to them. Uh, Rusty Goffey, or Goffey, if I'm pronouncing that right, the Jawa autograph, shared a few heartwarming stories about meeting one of the last Munchin actresses and how nice she was. I'm sure that was, I'm sure that probably would have been a thing for him to meet her. I mean, the I mean the Munchkin actresses. I'm assuming I'm, I'm trying to report this nicely. <laughs> uh, not no way to sound mean at all. I don't mean to, but in the com that community, especially that portion of the community, it's an acting. They would be legends, even if all they did was just stand there on camera and had no dialogue. Maybe just some steps in it. So that would be it. That would be, uh, that'd be like uh, the people of the people on my mother's side of the family, Irish, meeting somebody from Darby O'Gill and the Little People, or someone on my dad's side meeting uh, one of those legendary Native actors. He also said he feels like the luckiest little person in Hollywood because flip the page of his association with the likes of Willy Wonka, Star Wars, and Harry Potter. With those three alone under his belt, I can see why. Steven Machette was also cool. He said that his he personally feels that the Monster Squad is unremakable due to the changing times. I'd say, I'd say, I'd say it's more unremakable because it, it's kind of hard to capture that lightning in a bottle. I mean, the only way you could remake that is if you did like 80s horror icons in a similar manner, but it's like, how? It's not like those ones where they already had their own cinematic universe and you're simply just updating it and basically make it like if fans of it found out that the creatures were real. And we technically already have something kind of similar to that that was made around the same time in uh, Waxwork. Because we all know Jason was supposed to have a little cameo in there, but it didn't happen. But that might be the only way something like that would happen, but nowadays we have it in the form of the video games. Yeah, it's like the changing times definitely with the... With just what the film's about. Because I think with a, with a preteen, you could still get away with the line like... Wolfman's got nards. Uh, okay, James Sands. Of children idolizing movie villains more than the good guys. 
Uh, yeah, maybe a little bit more with that, but then there's always been people that like the bad guys. I mean, pro wrestling, there's always been fans that cheer the villains in lieu of the bad guys. I mean, that's what front row section D is. And I'm going to admit, I've always kind of liked the bad guys, even though I've cheered for the heroes a lot of times, but it's usually because they're villains that you so, so like, because they ooze charisma like Freddy Krueger. Uh, Dick Warlock, ooh, Dick Warlock and Kane Hodder were also cool. Everything you probably heard is all true and more. Steve Dash was awesome. I saw him at a tribute for the third Jason, Richard Brooker. He told me that he made peace with Warrington despite his unforgivable acts. I hope you enjoyed the small anecdotes. Once again, I apologize for these long delay gifts. Hope you enjoy. Uh, your friend slash fan, Corey. P.S. Could you please DM me that, that commercial I appeared in? I can't find it. I think I know which one he's talking about. I will actually send you all the ones that I kind of appeared in. I just got to look through them. Uh, and I can't find it online, but I can, uh, if you want, I can also send you the little brief clip uh, for one of those auction shows that me and my LARP buddies appeared in. And the final cut, I'm only in a couple shots, but you can definitely tell it's me, even though I'm under my old armor. Let's see. Steve Dash, the Jason from Friday the 13th Part 2. Baghead Jason. The one that actually shows that at least in his humanoid form, Jason does have balls. I mean, he gets kicked in the nads by Ginny, so... Voorhees got nards! <laughs> I have a picture here with him. It's like, ah, watch the machete. Alright, oh yeah. Alright, two Mario. Uh, 2,000 years <laughs> guys. One of my favorite lines in the whole movie. Do not get up and walk away by themselves. He walks away by himself. Uh, of course, the thing I love about him is that they poke fun at the constant string of slasher sequels, him and his son's character, where they point out that you could destroy the villain in the most convoluted manner, get rid of him to the fact that they cannot come back and they'd still return from the grave. I think that's a little bit more of a shot at Jason because of how convoluted the death started to get. But you can apply it with a lot of slashers, like with Freddy, but Freddy's kind of makes sense considering he is undead spiritually. But, you know, after Buried and Consecrated, it's like, yeah, we got to get very creative and very convoluted after this point. All righty. All right, then we got Warlock here tomorrow. Thanks. All right, now that's cool. Got to love a good Dick Warlock. Now oh, there he is. Definitely getting up there in age, but he still looks like he could put the mask on and then look at you just intimidating and be like, oh, yeah. Funny little story is that I almost met Nick Castle the weekend before I'm recording this. It's just that the line at Monster Palooza was way too long by the time I was free to do something. But it's like, him War and Warlock are probably the two Michael actors I would really love to meet. You know, and of course, the remake one, but that's also because of all the stuff he's done. Oh yeah, Kane Hodder. This is the only one I technically have an autograph for. Uh, actually, not an autograph. I have a photo with him. But having an autograph with him, oh, that's cool. I wonder... Uh, if you can put in the comment section when you got this, because I want I'm trying to I would like to know if timeline wise if it's before or after I got the photo with him, because I got the photo with him last Monster Palooza. And I that was some good little dialogue. Like you saw me come in full Jason gear. I mean it was part six Jason, but still he's like, and they send this big motherfucker in to make me look small. Nah, no, I'm just kidding, dude. You look great. And all that. I mean, that was a fun photo and all that. <laughs> here he is, he's got you by the throat. <laughs> and of course, here we go. Our Jawa guy. All right. Oh, yeah. Here's, he looks like he, he had a fun time talking with him. And there's a photo of that. And, of course, because of it, I got to say it. Teeny. So, Corey. <laughs> Once again, buddy, I thank you for these. These are going to be cherished. And these are going to go into the same little file I got the other ones with in my other autographs. And once again, I thank you wholeheartedly for them, buddy. And like I said, I will get those commercial links to you ASAP. So, until next time, everybody.